the last time we talked, uh, you were doing a radio show. You were enjoying it, but it didn't work out. Then you went to Chapters Books, and you were... The other way around. Chapters Books, then the radio show. Is that the way it worked? Yep. All right. So uh, maybe I should have listened to the previous video. <laughs> but anyway, so what happened after the radio show then? So this is about 2005, and that's when we had the real core families that have been with us uh, since then, you know, that really formed the backbone of the of the congregation as uh -huh. a church plant. So we had the Summers attend. Rob Summers is our elder on session now. And uh, the Gillens came and the Sutherlands, and these are the real core families that stuck with us in addition to brother and sister in law, the Farron Horse, that were part of the church. How did those people come time? to be in the church? Uh, Rob Summers and the Farron Horse and others? It must have been, as I look back, these are the days of newspaper, so we had an ad. I'm not sure if, the, if at that time people were looking as much on the internet as they were back then yeah. so <clears throat> but they yeah they came in and and you know 2005 up to 2010 which is when we became organized as a congregation it could have been a, l a large congregation but it would be families would come and then they would move. And it was constantly coming in and going, coming in and coming go and going. And uh, we just never had it where people were coming and staying, you know. And that is, that's one of the, probably the greatest difficulties of doing church planting, especially if you're starting out, you know, with really nothing, is never really seeing it flourish, you know. It's hard, though. It, it really is hard. Or if there's any difficulty, and we've had that in in the church, and you know, it's one thing that you have a, a fairly large congregation, and if one or two families leave, that's you know, you still have eighty percent, ninety percent of the congregation. Yes. But when you have one or two families leave, and that's half the congregation, that's uh, it's it's really really difficult. And if that happens once, it's hard. It happens a second time. When it happens a third time, you begin, you begin to ask questions about what we're doing here. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And that's why you have to, I think you, in church planting, you should be looking at what you're doing and not how God is using it, if that makes sense. Yes. And that what you're there to do is to preach the gospel and to just continue to persevere in it. And then however the Lord's going to bless that, then you have to... Leave that to him. So I would also say that from 2005 to 2010, well, really all the way up to the present uh, day, if you were to look at the bulk of the, of the hard work of church planting in new creation, any honest objective evaluation of that would have to come to the conclusion that the real heavy lifting was my wife and all of her work that she did. My wife n never, never paused at any point in terms of her opening up the home to hospitality, getting involved in supporting any ministry whatsoever, 100% behind. And that was something, too, from the time that we were married, that we were on the same page, that every Lord's Day, after the evening service, the home would be open for anyone to come over. And so she always prepared, you know, a meal. And the other ladies and these, these families that continued to come were always faithful in that as well. My sister-in-law always called Alenica and said, what do we want to do for the for the uh, fellowship meal after the evening service. So we always just made sure that it was an open home for that, and she was always 100% in that. We also did from that time, because of her involvement in that, is like things like we want to develop a wide spectrum kind of ministry. So we had a kids' club, obviously, and that was for the kids in the congregation, uh, young kids at that time. We didn't have teenagers at that point yet and their friends in the neighborhood. So we do like a summer so soccer camp and 
divided into two parts, you know, a little practice part and then a little Bible lesson and then a little game or scrimmage after that. And was this soccer or football? Yeah, football. Sure. It is football. Not soccer. No, it is soccer in football. It's well, the round ball that you kick with your feet. Well, just the word scrimmage. Just, yes, I, I, I get totally lost by that. Because okay. as, as somebody who kicked a ball for many years of my life, scrimmage was just, that just threw me that word there. All right. Well, I thought. Mixing your metaphors. Okay. All right. Scrimmage, isn't that like just like a little, not, a, not an official game, but just kind of like a. Hey, this isn't an official game. All right, this game. Right. you're educating me in the word scrimmage then. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> um, in all honesty, uh -huh. if this means anything, I that is a part of the work that I did not like. Okay. You know, just because it wasn't, I'm not sportsy, and I'm not, you know, and it's and it it was very very difficult. But we do it because you never know where the seed's gonna. Yes. Take root. So we also had a long-term care ministry, like home. Yes. So that would be once a month <clears throat> in between our services. Then we would go and have like a, a, a service in the, in the local home. And again, Elenica, my wife, on Saturdays, every week would go into that home and visit, bring our daughter tears and so on. So COVID's kind of put a stop to that, but, and then midweek Bible studies, catechisms for the, for the church as well. So trying to just make sure that we have young people, old people, and everyone in between. Yes. Right. So. In terms of whenever you were early on, where did you, you meet? Because you come back to the chapters time, 2004, 2005, the reveal interview time. Where were you meeting at that time? Yeah, okay. That's a good point. First of all, we did community center and we were having one service at a time at that point. And then we rented from a church, a United Church, again, one service in the afternoon. But about 2005, we began renting from a private school, a gymnasium. Scholars Hall, and we got some chairs, our own chairs, pretty pretty nice chairs, actually. Uh -huh. And then we could go to two services. So we could set up the chairs in the morning and then leave them set up and then come back and have the afternoon service. And here again is, you know, the help and the, the labor that is really needed for church planting. The summers came in every Lord's Day in the morning and set up all those chairs every time. That was something I never had to worry about. And that's such a tremendous help. And little little things, that's a big thing. <clears throat> things like that, you know, are so important when people, even in the smallest congregation, you know, are willing to invest that time to regularly do that. You know? they're, they're critical. Yeah, they're absolutely critical because you're you're juggling so many different activities as a pastor. In a situation, it's just such an encouragement when an individual or a family says, "We'll take that off you." Yep. It's like a huge mental lift. Those people like that are precious. Yeah. And you can, you can, they can often be taken for granted. Yeah. You know, if you've done it for a month or two or a year, oh, it's just they just do that. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and they certainly did that for year after year after year until we started. Renting now the building where we are, Christ the King. And when did you start renting that? 2018 is when we started that. And I would say that, you know, before when we started church planning, I thought the church building is not an important thing. And of course, in, in a sense, it isn't. It, it doesn't matter where, where you meet. But it certainly is a benefit. You know, it's just a practical thing that is very helpful the church planting or church building. Do you think the, the actual physical appearance of a church building, I know there are a lot of appearances of church building, but does that, does that, I'm not leading you, just asking the question. No, that, and I, I do think so. I do completely. I, it was funny because when we started it in 2001, 2003, I would have said the opposite. I would have said the way that the culture is that 
they associate things with the church building. And if you have something that's more neutral, that it would be, and I don't think that's the case anymore. I think that, you know, as the society is getting more and more chaotic, that people within their souls, as they're searching, look are looking for stability. And that's one of those things that they're building in some way. You know, shows so, that kind of what's your relationship with, with in that situation currently? You're renting it, obviously. Is there any restrictions in terms of morning, evening worship? Yeah, we've all had to work our times around what they're doing, and there's been adjustments, and it's been challenging for us in terms of, you know, we, we, we would like to buy the building. Yes. And it, it needs some renovation work and so on, and... Is, is that a, is that a possibility you see in the next five years or so? Is there? A, I know these things it's difficult to put a time scale on it, but is there an appetite within the congregation to to buy it? Or? Yeah, it's interesting that you say that. Is it possible? Just this past Lord's Day, there was a lady from this. I think it's like a retirement home that's right next to the church property, and she was asking about the church. And she said about the church where we're meeting, they said, oh, these people are going to sell their church building soon. You know, they're, they're small. They're just, they're going to need to sell. So I said to this woman as she was getting ready to leave and we were getting ready to start our service. I said, you know, if you know anyone in this congregation, then please remind them that we really want to purchase this uh -huh. building. And she turned around to me. I don't know this lady. I've never yeah. met her. Turned around and said, have faith in God and you will get your building. <laughs> <laughs> so or, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that was that was interesting. So yeah. I'm just saying, when you say, is it possible? Well, yeah. With God, all things are possible. Yes. And so, if you would uh, be pleased to give that, that would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. good. 